In her City Heights apartment on a recent Monday, Fatima Ahmed drops a traditional Somalian donut into a pot of boiling oil. Mandasi is in uh, bread, in uh, flour, yeast, and sugar, a little bit of sugar, not too much. And with, with the eggs, yeah, to mix it, yeah. Ahmed cooks a lot now to de-stress. She moved to the United States as a single mother over a decade ago to escape civil war in Somalia, where her husband was killed. She feels safer here, but recently the COVID-19 pandemic and protests against police brutality have made her anxious. Her niece, Faiza Orsame, translates. Would they get the COVID-19? Are, are they going to, you know, face any problems with the police? There's so much worry that's going into my head when they don't answer my call and um, they're not giving me a call back. Ahmed says she doesn't know any therapist who speaks Somali. She talks to friends and family to feel better, but she still often feels anxious and says she sometimes takes painkillers before sleeping. When, when I'm stressing so much about my children, like I don't get sleep. So with no sleep, I like the body hurts. So not having enough sleep and not being able to sleep, my whole body just aches and hurts. National data show black and brown communities are being hit the hardest by the pandemic. And many public health officials, including San Diego's public health officer, Wilma Wooten, says that's due to underlying health conditions like obesity, hypertension, and stress. But some academics argue that racism is a chronic form of stress that can't be treated medically. April Timms is a University of Southern California neuropsychologist. Those kind of stressors can have affect anybody, but we, see, we tend to see them disproportionately in ethnic racial minority communities. But then there's another type of stressor, which is different, which is stress that's directly tied to your race. Tim says chronic stress for people of color is tied to uncertainty. Will I be stopped by a police officer today? Will I be judged? Or will I be harassed? Tims and her colleagues looked into the science of how this anticipatory anxiety biologically affects the body. And we saw that blacks, more so than whites, had this pattern of sort of, if you will, susceptible gene expression. There are certain genes or parts of our DNA that regulate how we handle pathogens like the coronavirus. In her research, Tims found blacks expressed more genes that caused an inflammatory or swelling response and fewer genes that produced an antiviral response, which helps the body fight a disease. Tim says all the people who were studied had similar socioeconomic backgrounds and access to health care. The only potential stressor that differed between the two racial groups was discrimination experiences. The research suggests stress from chronic racial discrimination not only causes issues like high blood pressure, she says it also biologically makes it more difficult for people to fight off diseases. So it's not only black mothers that are worried. A number of young black men from City Heights launched a community mental health support group about three years ago. They get together in the corner room of a nonprofit group, United Women of East Africa. They play games, shoot hoops at a nearby basketball court, but mostly they talk. Abdirazak Ahmed is one of the organizers. So how has everything been for you guys? I know we haven't met in a long time. But not everyone in these communities have this type of outlet. One participant, Abdi Hussein, says there's a stigma within the community of admitting you need help. It kind of gets brushed under the rug a little bit because as black people, um, we, we, we kind of have this aura of getting over it, especially as teenagers and young adults and stuff like that. We're already dealing with life-changing things, and then on top of that, you add racism. Hussein says the younger Black generation is increasingly realizing how critical mental health is, but he feels that people outside the community are still not seeing it, even those who work in the medical field. From a professional standpoint, the institutions that exist have to have cultural competency when these professionals are coming along to realize, okay, you can't talk to this person like a regular American, or you can't talk to this person like the, the community that you're used to all the time. You have to tailor to them, and you have to see What's, what are the ins and outs of it higher? Like you said, there's plenty of people that are psychologists that are Somali um, that can fill these jobs, hire them. As communities of color continue to be hit the hardest by the pandemic, scientists say racism is a key medical issue that has to be factored into the public health response. Shalina Chalani, KPBS News.